Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Bernie here along with Pete. Yo. And before we get started guys, we all know that the big game tonight, this will probably go out a little bit later, but Duke UNC is playing Wednesday night when we're recording this. Tickets are astronomically high right now. They're reaching that Super Bowl level price. I mean, we checked with StubHub ourselves. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous for just one ticket. Like even getting a signed basketball by Coach K is worth less than the tickets to this game. It's worth like a quarter of the price. <laughs> And which leads us to our conversation that we're gonna have today, and that's more on the mock draft side and what we see here on the NBA draft mock net and also other sites leading on to this. Of course, we know that Zion Williamson mm -hmm. from other GMs and other sources that he's probably gonna be the consensus number one pick. Yeah, not even a question. The real question, the real uh, worrying or question mark that we're seeing in our opinions of what we think is of course the number two pick where yes. we see John Morant being the uh, second pick by the Phoenix Suns, which to me is a very Phoenix pick. No disrespect to Jay Morant. I think he's gonna be a great player. But at number two, I just think that there are better players ahead of him. But the real question I wanna ask you, Peter, and we'll talk about it more is, yes. throughout this whole uh, situation that we're seeing here on the mock draft side, what is the biggest standout to you? Or like, what is the biggest question mark? Mm, I think like, this draft is just incredibly top heavy. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's, there's a lot of like, okay, that guy could be an average yeah. role player in the league. It's that kind of draft, mm -hmm. right? But the the top five, I feel like it's, it's moving around way too much to yeah. me. Like all these guys who are putting out their mock drafts, I think people are just doing way too much with their mock drafts. Like there, to me, there's no question that Zion is number one. And to me, me personally, there's no reason that RJ, Barrett, and Cam Reddish shouldn't be in the top five either based on their just physical attributes alone. There's no way those guys shouldn't be in there. But then you look at the track record of both of them and the fact that they're sharing minutes with two other top five picks each. Like, yeah. how, how were those guys' stats not just instantly looked at as, you know, like on a curve, basically. It should be. Mm -hmm. Then you have Rui Hachimura, who is a freak. Like, he's, to me, a consensus top five pick, too. And then you could say Ja, right? I just always find it so interesting, like, the traps that a lot of people fall into. It, it feels like scouts and people making their mock drafts year in and year out do the same thing all the time. They just go with like who scores the most points mm -hmm. in NCAA basketball or who they see put up the craziest dunks all mm -hmm. the time is like that guy is going to be the best. You know? Mm -hmm. Why is John ja Morant all of a sudden the number two consensus pick basically? The guy plays at Murray State. He plays bums every night. I'm not saying he's going to be bad. I'm just saying you have to take it with a grain of salt, right? I mean, uh, let me play devil, uh, level right, devil's well, advocate I need, here. I need to hear it. All right, so you know, you know, mid-majors, they're not really known for that much, but I mean, we've seen guys before come out of it. I mean, guys like for sure. Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, just to name the recent guys. For sure. So, I mean, maybe he's in that caliber type of class, maybe a Damian Lillard type, a more athletic Damian Lillard, I should say, just because, you know, 6'3", and yeah. can, like really jam it down. But I will agree with you here, just because I think what I've seen from Jay Morant watching a couple of his games, and also seeing guys like RJ Barrett and Cam Reddish watching their games, and even Rui, because I have a lot of Gonzaga friends, and I always like to catch up on how they're doing and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm just very surprised as to see him go number two, because I think this would be such a Phoenix pick to me. You know, trying to find that point guard, trying to see what they could do. But in my heart of heart, I think that the Phoenix Suns already have their point guard. It's Devin Booker. I think yeah. Devin Booker, averaging almost seven assists a game, work on him being a point guard in that sense. Yeah. And then draft a guy like Cam Reddish or RJ Barrett. I think that'll be a better solution for the Phoenix Suns yeah. than just going with the point guard. I, I, as much as I like Jay Moran, I just think that he's probably a better fit maybe in Memphis, where you say Mike Conley, you yeah. know, we, we love you, but it's time to move on. And I think that would be the perfect replacement for a Mike Conley. Or Memphis. even you keep Mike Conley and have him be the, like the mentor yeah. to him, you know? It's just like, everybody acknowledges the fact that this draft is very top heavy. Mm -hmm. Like all the analysts, everybody, they all say it very adamantly. Like right. this draft is nowhere near the depth of talent that last year's was. Mm -hmm. Yet here we are with 
a rotating cast of 10 top, like, of top 10 picks in the top, in the mock drafts, excuse me, it, for no reason. I don't understand it. Like, the fact that DeAndre Hunter is another person I keep coming back. I keep coming back to DeAndre Hunter because he was consensus a top 10 pick last year for right. the most part, right? At least a lottery pick. And then he got hurt. And this year, he's playing just as good as he was last year on one of the biggest teams in all of college basketball in one of the most successful programs currently in college basketball. And this guy is projected as like the 16th pick. Like, what are you, what are they watching? I just don't get it. The guy is six, what is he, six foot six? Or is he a little shorter than that? I mean, they list him at six. Oh, he's six foot seven. Okay. But he's probably six six, I would say. But he has like a seven foot three wingspan and he's a freak defensively. And people are putting a guy like John Morant, who has never even played a team nearly as good as, I mean, even my beloved Syracuse. He hasn't even played a team that's on the caliber of them, right? And they're a bubble team. I just, it just blows my mind. Every year, some of the guys that these mock draft analysts will come up with mm. are shocking. Just because they need to have like, I'm the guy who put Ja Morant in the top three first. That was me, right? And then he goes to the NBA, the Phoenix Suns pick him at number two, and he's just kind of average, you know? He's like the next Alfred Payton. Like why? Why were we talking about this guy? He's six foot three and he played in a mid-major team. And I understand that he has potential to be great. He's played with Zion Williamson before, like ten years ago in some, you know, small AAU or whatever it was, right? Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter to me if he's playing at Murray State against a bunch of scrubs. And the only highlights I ever see are him dunking on dudes that he should in all right be dunking on all the time. You know? <laughs> Like, I'm saying literally, he's dunking on people, and people are making highlight reels of him dunking on them. Zion, if he was against the same team, would dunk on all five of the dudes at the <laughs> same time. But, I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, but let me ask you this then. If you had to pick your top five, what's your top five? Top five. H hands down, without a doubt to me, the top three are the, the Duke boys. It's what's Zion, okay. RJ, Cam Reddish. And honestly, you could, I know that I was the, the big proponent of RJ Barrett as number one. I could even be convinced that Cam Reddish could go number two because he's a freak himself. He can shoot really well. He's huge. He, I mean, he has like the Brandon Ingram style frame, yeah. except from what I've seen, like he can actually shoot the three ball pretty consistently. Yeah. That is the kind of player that I want more so than a six foot three mid-major player. Excuse me, the John Morant hate continues. <laughs> it's not even hate, I just need to see more. Four would be Rui. I would take him just because he has the frame and potential to be great. And then five, I mean, I could even be convinced that John Morant is number five, but I would even say it, I don't know. I would say, I would say Nazir Little. Nazir Little. I like him a lot. I like him so. I like him. Or even like to me, the number five, the person I would be looking at after those four guys would be DeAndre Hunter. I feel like he has like honest potential. You think so? And he just he plays against good competition. He's consistently good. Okay. I can see that, that matters to me. Okay. I think if I had to go with my top five, I think I would go. I go Zion. Okay. I'd go Cam Reddish. Okay, as your number two. As my number two. This one I think is probably gonna make you upset, but I'm gonna go with Rui. Okay, over, yeah, that's fine. Then I'm gonna go Jaw. Oh, wow. And then I'm gonna go RJ. Wow, you put Jaw over RJ Barrett. And the reason why I'm picking Jaw over RJ Barrett is because I think Jaw does a better job of distributing the ball than I think RJ, and I know that's not RJ's position. I know he's supposed to be a scorer. I yeah. know that's what his role is. But those are the type of guys, like James Harden-esque type of style guys that, in my opinion, as a coach myself, I don't like that style. I like when everybody touches the ball. I like when everybody moves the rock. And I think that he needs to go to a situation, like RJ, like right now is predicted to go to the Cleveland Cavaliers. That'd be terrific. Terrible. I think that's I think, terrible. I think that's perfect because he's the only guy that's gonna be taking the shots. Mm, I think he needs to not go to that kind of situation. I, need to, I think he needs to go somewhere where he's instantly learning not to do that. Like, learn your good habits right away and don't get really terrible habits to start. Like, that could be the exact argument against Devin Booker, right? 
is that he's had years of terrible habit forming with really terrible teams in Phoenix. So if you put RJ Barrett on a god awful Cleveland team where he's gonna take 25 shots a game, that could possibly set him up for awful failure for the rest of his career. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I'm, not, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying that I would say, put him on a team where maybe that's not the case. Well, I just feel that the reason why I go there is because, you know, we see, we're see we seeing guys like, uh, you know, Giannis and guys like James Harden. Mm -hmm. They're just taking over the scoring load, especially yeah. James Harden as a one-headed monster. Yeah. And I just think that if you're just going to, if that's the way he's going to play and you can't change that about yes, him, because, sure. you know, he's been doing this since AAU days, since his little, you know, peewee sports days. I mean, that's yeah. just the way he's played. Then I think then you're gonna have to live with that, and that's just the time. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. That's just the style of play that he is. I mean, you know, maybe Allen Iverson 2.0 in terms of maybe. carrying a team to the finals that way. A lot bigger. My th my thing is, and I said this just a second ago with Ja, right? In comparison to those guys, playing minutes is the best way to get an idea of a player, obviously. That's yeah. why like sometimes you have players like Kyrie who only played what? What did he play? 12 games in college or yeah, something? It was like 12, somewhere between like yeah. eight and 13 games. And he's a very special case where he was still pretty much the consensus guy that everybody yeah. wanted. But if you don't see the load or the amount of minutes against actual competitive teams, I feel like you don't have anywhere near the fair assessment of what they could be and it sways your opinion of what they're going to be, right? And d that doesn't mean that it's impossible for a guy like John Morant to be good. I'm just saying like the chances of him being as good as Damian Lillard or CJ McCollum, it's astronomical, right? Think of how many people go through mid-major teams that put up big numbers and don't ever play a single minute in the NBA, right? He just so happens to have things happen for him where he can put up a big highlight, you know? But RJ Barrett is a guy who's played in the FIBA, you know, under 18 world championships and he carried Canada to win it against really high level talent, right? He's playing on a Duke team where they have an incredible chance to win the national championship not completely due to him, but he's one of the three biggest parts of the team. I'm just saying like that stuff has to matter. I mean, it has to matter in the sense that it matters for the NBA too. You can't give a guy like Kemba Walker a first all, first NBA all team or first all team NBA or whatever, right? Yeah. If his team only wins 27 games, right. but he can still put up the numbers to make himself look that good, right? I think that matters. It does, to me at least. I mean, I can see what you're saying, but I just think that John Moran, from the stuff that I've seen and watched his game, obviously I think he's not top two, but I do think that he should be at least top three. I think that his game, the only knock against him is mm -hmm. that it's his three-point shot. And I think that another guy that some people have been comparing him to, which I think is kind of unfair, is De'Aaron Fox. And the fact that he is lightning quick, he's yeah. athletic, he's explosive, but he just has, doesn't have the shot. And we know that De'Aaron Fox has developed that shot a little bit better now. Yeah. I mean, I could see it. I think it's kind of unfair to compare him to him. But I think that, you know, a team like Chicago might use him. Maybe. I wouldn't... I just don't know, man. I just don't know. I feel like he seems like that kind of pick that people are really going to convince themselves that we're not getting Zion. Let's take a, a swing at somebody. And he seems like that's the guy. In some team, I, it just feels like a team is going to be really disappointed. To me. I think every team is going to be disappointed that doesn't get Zion this year, though. Why wouldn't you? And yeah, I mean, like, obviously... Unless RJ Barrett or Rui Hachimura turns out to be incredible. But no team is going to be happy with what they pick. And it means that people are going to make crazy swings this this draft season i mean we've already seen some crazy stuff especially at the beginning of the season you know bull bull was a top 15 yep. pick uh you know guys like you know kevin porter was also up there as well jonte porter was up there too but i jonte think porter. he got hurt too didn't he yeah he got hurt and then you know guys like you know your guy deandre hunter and even guys like seko dumbia was supposed to be a top two pick yeah 
wild. Romeo Langford was way up there too. It's like number five or something like that. So I mean, this is just going to be a very interesting class. Like you said, it's very top heavy with some stars or some players, I should say, not stars. Some players that who can either make or break it, especially in the position that they're drafted in. You know, guys like Bobo, guys like Dumbia, guys like Romeo Langford. We'll yes. see what happens to those guys because I'm more interested, like, you know, obviously the top five stuff, you know, with John Moran, Zion Williamson, you know, those guys. I'm not really too worried about those guys making it in the league. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger story that I'm looking for, and I know it's kind of deterred from what we talked about just yeah. now, I think those guys are going to be the more interesting story to me. Will they live up to the hype that they had at the beginning of the season, or are they just going to yeah. end up being those role players that every mock draft is now predicting them to be? Definitely, definitely. I, I mean, to me, the most curious thing, like I'm just so fascinated to see how far the tides will turn on this mm -hmm. the Duke guys. Yeah. And obviously Zion is ex exempt from that. But I'm saying, like, how much is playing with Zion going to work against RJ Barrett and Cam Reddish? Because it really feels like that. Because everybody was saying that RJ Barrett was the guy before the season. And I'm telling you for a fact that if he didn't play with Zion, it wouldn't be like, I feel like he would still be the number two pick yeah. or number one in some people's books. Yeah. But he has so much of his game is deterred by what happens with Zion right. and the focus that's put on him that it makes him and Cam Reddish not always look as good as they could. Right, exactly. But then it also makes people like John Morant look better because he's on his own team by himself. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. I mean, like with John Moran, like on his own, it, you know, stats are- I'm like, talking a lot of nonsense, but it's <laughs> really just be like not, I'm talking a lot of negative stuff towards Ja, yeah. but it's more of my feeling of why these analysts look down on these other like top tier prospects. Right. Like I don't understand why Cam Reddish is number five. To me, that makes no sense why any team would pass up on him in the upcoming draft. I mean, if he ends up going to Atlanta at number five, I it's really I love that Atlanta Hawks team. I think that they would be they would be incredible if he slipped to number five. Like their team is already pretty good for where they're supposed to be. Yeah. But then if they get a dude who really should not slip as far as five to slip there why and then a team like phoenix is going to have another point guard who hasn't proved anything where they could have had a six foot seven guy who can shoot on top tier basketball games yeah and that's the reason why i had uh cam reddish as my number two guy because i think that his potential is just astronomically high like i understand this might be another brandon ingram type of situation yeah but i just think that he will be better than brandon ingram in terms mm -hmm. of potential and the way that he's right now i think he'll be a lot better at where he's at and it's just like to me that going with a guy in john morant yes it would be you know filling in that point guard hole but like i said you already have a point guard in devin booker just yeah. stick with devin booker as your point guard get cam reddish and then you have a decently solid roster that could grow up together you know doing it through the draft <laughs> like the spurs did like the warriors did you could potentially have that in phoenix where you're not getting a, uh, a superstar to yeah. sign there like no one wants to go to phoenix no. i know and my last thing about this top five and ja and this is not necessarily reflective of ja morant it's more so of the desperation for guards in the league he's the only top 10 prospect that's a point guard i think like consistently top 10 person yeah. definitely top five he's the only one that's a point guard and i think that there's a lot of teams that say we need to pick this guy because we need a point guard and that's so, it, you don't need that guy to play point guard you know mm -hmm. i don't know why teams wouldn't say zion i mean zion is going to go play whatever he wants to play right but why a team wouldn't say why don't we get zion and let him dribble the ball at the court and play like a point center right it does do what the bucks do with Giannis, you know yeah but everybody i feel like teams are still falling into the trap of like positional specification like they this guy is a point guard we need to pick him because he's a point guard why pick cam reddish and let him dribble the ball at the court you know figure it out yeah i mean this is just going to be a very interesting situation what goes on in this draft of course you know the draft is you know months away and we're gonna have to see especially after this unc game what goes yeah. on like will it's huge will zion williamson's or rj or cam reddish's stock jump even higher and then as the tournament starts to hit around and we start watching basketball a lot more closely than we do now yeah. 
what's going to be the situation with those guys but we want to know your guys's opinion on this whole situation what do you guys think of john morant is he overrated is he underrated or is he rated where he should be we'd love to know your guys opinion also on guys like cam reddish rj barrett and zion williamson who would you pick out of those three what's your order put that in the comments down below but anyway guys this has been oh boss i have a question for you <laughs> all right go ahead last question i'm gonna add one more thing in here all right and this is a question for you and the and the commenters in there last year we were very high on luca right yeah. we were pretty much both luca. consensus luca's yeah. number one and i think a lot of right-minded people were and he obviously did not go there where do you feel about him versus zion like if they were in the same draft who would you be picking I think I'd still pick Luca. I would too. I'm glad we feel the same. I would pick, I love Zion and I feel like he just has this, this mega hype where any draft, I think people would say he's the guy. Mm -hmm. I don't feel the same way I feel about him as I did about Luca or as I would have about LeBron back when he got drafted. But I think people are convincing themselves. Yeah, I mean, like, the thing with, the like, if I was going to, like, let's say Luca was in this draft instead of last year. I think with Luca, what I get from him is shooting. And because this is a shooting league, not saying that uh, Zion Williamson's shot is not the best or the worst. It's just, it's there right now. It's mm -hmm. not, it's a pretty all right form. I, mean, I know he's a lefty. He just needs to work on being more consistent with it because mm -hmm. it doesn't. For sure. Because he's not, he doesn't hit it at a consistent clip. But I just think that with Lucas shooting and everything that he's able to do, yeah, it, it, I think it wouldn't be a question that it would be Luca than Zion. I just my my point and the reason I brought this up is I find it very interesting how the tides can turn. You know, yeah. like now people look at Luca as like the guy in the NBA, mm -hmm. but nobody was like people were giving us so much shit for how we felt about Luca. Yeah. And then even up till the draft, he still nobody believed he was the number one pick, right? Yeah. A lot of people didn't. But now the tides have turned, but everybody feels the way about Zion that we did about Luca, right? I just I just find it a little interesting. Well I just think that from this it's just the the time of like ball is life <laughs> and overtime and just these highlights yeah. the highlight era where you don't really watch the games and you don't really pay attention to it. You just watch the crazy highlights. You know, the block that Zion Williamson had against that guy in was oh, it Virginia. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. The answer Virginia where he just came out and from Saskatchewan <laughs> all the way to just go block him. I mean, it was just ridiculously that far away. And I just think the, the sad part about this thing is the fact that we kind of do this to where we want to move on to the next thing. We don't appreciate, we don't appreciate the players that are in the league right now. Like we know that and we're now starting to see the talk of, oh, you know, LeBron's starting to get old. We need a new LeBron. Yeah. It's, and then the same situation like with, with Luca. Oh, you know, we, we love Luca right now. And then when Zion Williams comes in, oh, Zion, we love you now. I mean, it's just, I need people to just kind of stop and smell the roses a little bit and just kind of realize that we're living in a pretty damn good era where there's a lot of great basketball players Dude, coming out. This is the best basketball of my life. To me, at least. Like, it was pretty good when I was born, right? But yeah. I wasn't watching it. This is incredible. Just be happy you're getting what you're getting. Exactly. Not like Zion mania. I get it, but still, take a deep breath. I mean, because next year, you know, we're going to you know, have guys like Cole Anthony. I don't know if you know who he no, is. No, I do. He yeah, looks good. Cole Anthony, and then you got guys like LaMelo Ball who are starting to come in. I don't know about I mean, that one. <laughs> we'll see what happens there, you know, if he gets to go to college or not. But now, you know, there's always going to be a new guy each and every year. For sure. Just because of how AAU works and how the whole basketball scene is and what people are trying to do to get themselves, you know, guys like Julian Newman. I don't even yeah. know why I'm bringing him up. Yeah, but he, I mean, he's nowhere in the... <laughs> no, nowhere in the conversation, but, you know, guys that are just, you know... They make themselves... These internet basketball stars. Yeah. That's what it is. Internet basketball stars versus real talent, right? Yeah. And differentiating who's what. And then the people who are both is really important. Like Zion is obviously both. Yeah. But it is what it is, right? But that's the last question. I know Bernie already asked you guys some questions. Zion or Luca? And don't try not to use your rose tinted glasses with the Luca mania that's going on in the NBA and knowing what you know now. But think of how you felt about Luca this time last year or right at the draft compared to Zion. Tell me what you think. I need to know. But anyway, guys, now it's officially the end of the video. Yes. This has been your boy Bernie here along with Pete. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Smash 
that subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss our NBA content like we have one here today and other ones that we talked about in the past. But anyway, guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Stu, live,